Hello friends, welcome back to strategic management and we are talking about and we have been pursuing the thought of strategically managing value chains and developing value webs and management of strategy. And here we have reached to a point of strategy implementation. We are trying to understand strategy implementation in terms of how to reach to this strategic step, this very strategic step. And we have been talking about the levels of strategy, business level strategy, corporate level strategy and how corporate governance actually looks after everything. And here we have reached to a point wherein we would be taking a chord from some points which we have discussed earlier in terms of relationship of strategy and structure to emphasize upon the fact that how we should be implementing strategy at the ground, how should we be taking this step forward, what kind of structures are involved in that, what kind of a role structure plays in this kind of an implementation, what it takes to implement that effectively, where everything should go smoothly and that is the orientation of this session, wherein one thing which I wish to remind you of at the onset is that this implementation is relevant for any form of philosophical backdrop of strategy which we have discussed for example, red ocean or blue ocean in whichever way you want to pursue that. For example, if you want to pursue blue ocean strategy framework then also strategy and structure relationship and the levels where we would be talking about you know uh, the level of implementation and how structure plays role in the implementation of strategy it works in blue ocean also, it works in red ocean also, it works otherwise also, it works at the fortune or bottom of the pyramid also. So, largely it works everywhere. So, this is a generic kind of a thought which we are about to pursue here in this session and let us see what is there in store for us and we are talking about strategically managing value chains and management of strategy. So, and, and from that side to this side, yeah. So, relationships between strategy and structure, let us start from there and uh, you know use the background uh, kind of a discussion which we have had uh, quite a few sessions back. So, strategy and structure as we discussed also briefly have a uh, you know reciprocal relationship. This relationship highlights the interconnectedness between strategy formulation and strategy implementation as well. And here please uh, be reminded of all the lessons which we have gone through in terms of organizational life cycle, industry life cycle, correlation of those things with each other and so on. And here I am referring to HIT, Ireland and Hoskisson, strategic management concepts and cases, competitiveness and globalization, engaged learning. So, then the authors they add is that in general this reciprocal relationship finds structure flowing from or following selection of the firm's strategy. So, you see this is a very important thought which we have to pursue this particular line. Reciprocal relationship finds structure flowing from or following selection of the firm's strategy. Once in place though structure can influence current strategy actions as well as choices about future strategies. Let us see how it goes. So, the general nature of strategy or structure relationship means that changes to the firm strategy create the need to change how the organization completes its work. It is implemented on the ground actually. In the structure influences strategy direction, firms must be vigilant in their efforts to verify that how their structure calls for work to be completed remains consistent with the implementation requirements of the chosen strategies. Research shows however, and this is the most important line, strategy has much more important influence on structure than the reverse and this is how things are. So, there are simple structures, there are functional structures and there are multi divisional structures, how strategy works and, and although there are several other forms of structures within these frameworks, but, but to you know to broadly understand this relationship, let us go about all these three. And before I go ahead, we have been talking about the scale and scope, the span of the organizations. So, you see the story starts from simple structure because simple structure is very confined and that is why authors have very intelligently tried to draw our attention towards this kind of a stage so that we can think about you know when it functionally grows and then it grows in a multi-divisional kind of a manner. So, firms tend to grow in somewhat predictable patterns and we are talking about evolutionary patterns of strategy and organizational structures wherein we, we are building up the case from simple structures. So, firms tend to grow in somewhat predictable patterns first by volume, then by geography, 
then integration, vertical, horizontal and finally through product business diversification and this is generally what happens. You see I have been talking about and advocating the fact that firms should be thinking in terms of their value webs at the onset that happens many a times. But in general around the world when we see you know a firm starts, a business starts, then it grows, it expands, it's verti it vertically integrates, horizontally integrates, goes for related diversification, unrelated diversification many times and so on. And as depicted in the figure which I showed you, organizational growth creates the opportunity for the firm to change its strategy to try to become even more successful. And here comes organizational growth which is associated with the organizational life cycle as such, you desire for this kind of a growth. However, the existing structures, formal reporting relationships, procedures, controls and authority, reporting relationships, procedures, controls and authority and decision making processes lack the sophistication required to support using the new strategy as authors say. That means it is not so much in coherence uh, as far as the system goes. A new structure is needed to help decision makers gain access to the knowledge and understanding required to effectively integrate and coordinate actions to implement the new strategy. As such, you would have heard of so many firms when they are growing, many a times they tumble down, many a times they have to rethink in terms of their strategy. There are famous case studies like what Airbnb did when they rapidly grew, what, what Uber did when they rapidly grew and during that time you know many questions have been raised on these organizations and many a times you know they plummet down for a while then they raise themselves back into the fray and, and so on. So, so those kind of stories have been commonly heard of so many kinds of organizations about insurance companies, about banks, about small banks, microfinance, about shoe companies, about you know apparel companies and so on. So firms choose from among three major types of organizational structures, simple, functional, multidivisional to implement strategies and we are talking of how it is to be done precisely. The simple structure is a structure in which the owner manager makes all major decisions and monitors all activities while the staff serves as an extension of the manager's supervisory authority. Many of you know that, many of you are entrepreneurs probably and you know that how you know simple structures they work basically uh, medium, small, uh, micro enterprises, small and micro enterprises especially they belong to these kind of structures. So typically the owner manager actively works in the business on a daily basis. There are retail stores, there are restaurants, informal relationships, few rules, limited tasks, specialization and unsophisticated or, or authors have used that but, but you know uh, less sophisticated you may say, information systems characterize the structure. That means not, for example, you have seen medical store uh, when, when uh, the, the sales of a particular kind of a medicine is, is going on. So the owner keeps on writing on the pad that this is it's short in supply, this has to be brought in from the wholesale market this weekend when, when I would go there or this, this uh, you know week holiday or, or uh, the day I would be off from the shop. So frequent and informal communications between the owner, manager and employees make coordinating the work to be done relatively easy local restaurants, repair businesses, other specialized enterprises are examples of firm using the simple structure and you see sometimes these firms by revenue are quite okay, substantial but the size is limited and, and many a times you would find that firms are quite large as far as the revenue output and production output goes but that is largely automated precise product based kind of a production many a times and uh, the number of employees are very less wherein the owner is the expert of doing that and they are they are going for for example you know several brass manufacturers in uh, Muradabad region of Uttar Pradesh are there uh, several artifact manufacturers in several regions are there several textile manufacturers are there several uh, you know tile manufacturers are there and, and so many kinds of businesses are there wherein the size is large but uh, you know the number of employees and the you know span of organization is, is it, it goes, sends the products to the every, every corner of this country but number of people involved there is lesser. The chain is small in terms of as far as the complete value chain goes. So as the small firm grows larger and becomes more complex, complex in terms of the kind of partners you have in value chain, the number of customers, the geographical span, number of employees, the type of uh, you know elements you are using in your uh, as far as the whole of the value chain goes, the manufacturing processes, the distribution systems, uh, the IT, the kind of software and so on. So it becomes complex managerial and structural challenges emerge, definitely they have to. So the functional structure consists of a chief executive officer and a limited corporate staff. 
with functional line managers in dominant organizational areas such as production, accounting, marketing, R&D, engineering and human resource and that is what we teach in management programs. Most of the management programs they focus upon functional structures although there are several management programs which focus upon leadership structures and multi divisional organizational structures also so as their students should take that kind of a role and I have always been telling my students that you should be focusing upon that kind of a thing many a times. This is a specialized job you, in, you are uh, from the engineering side. So, you work in engineering functional division and, and so on. This structure allows for functional specialization thereby facilitating active sharing of knowledge within each functional area. Knowledge sharing facilitates career paths as well as professional development of functional specialists. However, a functional orientation can negatively affect communication and coordination among these representing different organizational functions. Things are becoming complex, there are functionalities, a coherence between the functionalities is required to implement the strategy on the dot and that is what we are going to learn. For this reason, the CEO must work hard to verify that the decisions and actions of individual business functions promote the entire firm rather than a single function. Here we are. And then this multi-divisional structure with continuing growth and success. Now we are increasing the span and many a times B2B firm is it tends to become B2C business to consumer, business to customer company basically and they want to go for retail themselves, they, they want to horizontally integrate, they want to even vertically integrate, they want to go for diversification also. Jaguar uh, from you know uh, different kinds of products associated with uh, bathroom fittings and those kind of things or, or tabs, now they have gone into electrical uh, uh, you know equipment or, or uh, let us say supplies. So, with continuing growth and success firms often consider great levels of diversification. Successfully using a diversification strategy requires analyzing substantially greater amounts of data and information when the firm offers the same products in different markets, market or geographic diversification. We have talked about all these things earlier also you know business level strategies, functional strategies and corporate level strategies or offers different products in several markets that is product diversification. So, you are increasing product lines, number of product lines and enhancing the value chain and you are creating a value web and, and going through the route of market or geographic diversification and product diversifications. In addition, trying to manage high levels of diversification through functional structures creates serious coordination and control problems. It has to be there like that. A fact that commonly leads to new structural form. You have to work upon the coherence of things basically and how things should work and so on. The multi-divisional M form structure consists of operating divisions, each representing a separate business or profit center in which top corporate officer delegates responsibility for day to day operations and business unit strategy to division managers. Each division represents a distinct self-contained business with its own functional hierarchy different branches of the banks, different divisions within the branches, different divisions above the branches and so on. We will talk about that. For example, SPI having different verticals within banking, you know corporate banking, investment banking, retail banking uh, on the other side L SBI insurance and people sitting in the same branch also many a times. So, so that is that is what we are referring to here. It, it becomes complex. It becomes complex. For, for example, you enter into a branch and you say that I have a problem with my debit card. Oh, that is the person you should be talking to and I want to you know uh, check on my account details that is the person you should be talking to and they belong to the same brand but not the same organization probably and the manager probably of the card uh, representative does not sit here. So, she is reporting to someone else somewhere else and the branch manager is concerned with the banking only many a times many a times you get confused on you know, uh, who should be reporting to for, for example, for debit card I should be calling. Uh, you know the, the line somewhere and then for the problems on the ground I should be talking to the branch manager and so on. And here comes business level strategies and the functional structure relationship. So, firms use different forms of the functional organizational structure to support implementing the cost leadership. You remember these words we have talked about that differentiation, integrated cost leadership, differentiation strategies and just recall those lessons and try to collate this with what I am trying to say. So, the differences in these forms are accounted for primarily by different uses of three important structure characteristics, specialization, centralization and formalization. Let us see. So, firms using the cost leadership strategy sell large quantities of standardized products to an industry's typical customer. 
simple reporting relationships, few layers in the decision making and authority structure, a centralized corporate staff and a strong focus on process improvements through the manufacturing function rather than the development of new products by emphasizing product R&D characterized the cost leadership form of functional structure. Self explanatory, we have talked about cost leadership, but how it is done as at the functional level that is what this demonstration is all about. This structure contributes to the emergence of low cost culture, a culture in which employees constantly try to find ways to reduce the costs incurred to complete their work. Now, let us look at the major points, operations is the main function here, process engineering is emphasized rather than new product research and development, relatively large centralized staff coordinates functions, formalized procedures allow for emergence of low cost culture. Overall structure is mechanistic, job roles are highly structured, many a times it, it is on the basis of OEM supplies wherein you have allotted manufacturing rights to someone, they manufacture for you, you are controlling that situation, many a times it also happens, this also happens as far as cost differentiation goes. Everything is standardized more or less and that is where it works. So, you have, you have a control from this side and, and you see that is how it looks like. So, centralized staff engineering, marketing, operations, personnel and accounting and so on. Do you, you know, require lot of coherence as far as this situation goes? Probably not. Everyone knows their work, it goes on. There was a time when automotives were also being sold this way basically. So, so because demand was high, standardized procedures were there, marketing knew what, to, uh, what job uh, had to be done and largely many organizations did not have a marketing division at that time, they were focused upon sales only and distribution at large as far as that particular function goes, Walmart. Walmart example we have been using and this is a very large organization, so time and again we, we refer to this kind of. Uh, these kind of examples. So, Walmart stores uses the functional structure to implement cost leadership strategies in each of its three segments, Walmart stores, Sam's Club and International. How? In the Walmart stores segment, which generates the largest share of the firm's total sales, the cost leadership strategy is used in firms super center, discount and neighborhood market detailing formats that is evident in several other formats here in India as well. Now, Walmart is in India definitely. So, long known for its always low prices slogan which was used for 19 years, Walmart recently changed to a new slogan and when I am saying recently authors have talked about that in uh, 2012, so they might have changed you know by 2008 or 2009, save money live better. Although the slogan is new, was new, Walmart continues using the functional organizational structure in its divisions to drive costs lower as the authors have depicted in the text. Firms using the differentiation strategy produce products customers perceive as being different in ways that create value for them. With this strategy, the firms want to sell non-standardized products, now the situation changes. So, when the products are non-standardized, relatively complex and flexible reporting relationships, frequent use of cross-functional product development teams and a strong focus on marketing and product R&D rather than manufacturing and process R&D characterize the differentiation form of the functional structure. And from this structure emerges a development oriented culture in which employees try to find out ways to further differentiate current products and to develop new highly differentiated product. For example, now you are graduating towards some innovation in the product, in the process, then definitely the structure has to be augmented because we are talking of implementation, remember this and for implementation we have to change things, that is where strategy precedes the structure. Continuous product innovation demands the people throughout the firm interpret and take action based on information that is often ambiguous, incomplete and uncertain and this is how it looks like. So, quite self explanatory, but the you know the situation changes here. Now, comes in you know how functional structure is, is there you know what, what is to be done in terms of implementation of differentiation strategy. So, marketing is the main function for keeping track of new product ideas. New product R&D is emphasized, most functions are decentralized, formulation is limited, overall st structure is organic, job roles are less structured although. So, then we are going for you know implementation of integrated cost leadership. Effective use of integrated strategy depends on the firm's successful combination of activities intended to reduce costs with activities intended to create additional differentiation features. Now, you require more coherence more combination, more compatibility 
and where everyone say has to be brought in as far as the implementation goes. You see what I am talking of now you have to meet more, you have to discuss more, you have to function in coherence with each other, everyone has to take part. As a result the integrated form of functional structure must have decision making patterns that are partially centralized and partially decentralized. You have to propel innovation as well. So, you have to give them free hand and we have talked about that earlier. We, we refer to several kinds of examples there. So, additionally jobs are semi specialized and rules and procedures call for some formal and some informal job behavior as well. Now, let us go towards corporate level strategies and the multi dimensional divisional structures and uh, I will take you to, uh, through this journey quickly of sorts you know to explain the context. So, the firm's continuing success leads to product or market diversification, the story is going on, firm is expanding. The firm's level of diversification is a function of decisions about the number and the type of businesses in which it will complete as well as how it will manage the businesses. Geared to managing individual organizational functions, increasing diversification eventually creates information processing, coordination and control problems that the functional structure cannot handle. Now it has become too large. Thus, using a diversification strategy requires the firm to change from the functional structure to multi-divisional structure to develop an appropriate strategy structure match and this is how it looks. And then there are you know as far as the, uh, the multi-divisional form structure forms go, cooperative form, strategic business unit form and competitive form. Let us quickly look at how does it looks and you see that that can be well understood by just going to the websites of different kinds of organizations. You go to the website of Textron, you go to the website of SBI, you go to the website of you know different kinds of organizations and you would realize what we are talking about here and Disney of course. The cooperative form is a structure in which horizontal integration is used to bring about interdivisional cooperation. The name says that divisions in a firm using the related constraint diversification we have talked about that. So, for, for this related constraint diversification strategy commonly are formed around products, markets or both. Structural integration devices create tight links among all divisions. Corporate office emphasizes centralized strategic planning, they have to human resources and marketing to foster cooperation between divisions. Rewards are subjective and tend to emphasize overall corporate performance in addition to divisional performance. R&D is likely to be centralized, culture emphasizes cooperative sharing what Microsoft is doing. So, headquarters and you know president, government affairs, legal affairs, corporate R&D, strategic planning, corporate human resources, corporate marketing, corporate finance and corporate HR traversing or communicating with product divisions all through. And examples can be, one of the examples is using this structure Harley Davidson has two divisions or segments motorcycles and related products and financial services. Why would they have gone for financial services? There would be several kinds of reasons we, uh, we can think about that, but just visit their website. These divisions are managed separately based on the fundamental differences in their operations. However, the divisions are related because they share the firm's brand name and reputation and mutually they, they might be helping each other basically, especially the financial services. All divisions in a related constraint firm share one or more corporate strength. Now, strategic business unit in terms of multidivisional form. So, strategic business unit or SBU is understood as a business unit within the overall corporate identity which is distinguishable from other business units because it serves a defined external market where management can conduct strategic planning in relation to products and markets. This definition says it all and it brings us to the stage where we can understand you know how the structure should be augmented according to SBUs. So, firms with fewer links or less constrained links among their divisions use the related link diversification strategy. The strategic business unit form consists of three levels, corporate headquarters, strategic business unit and strategic SBU divisions. And this structure is used by large firms and can be very, very complex. The divisions within each SBU are related in terms of shared products or markets or both and I named SBI before talking about this. Divisions within each SBU share product or market competencies to develop economies of scope and possibly economies of scale as well. And this is how it looks like. You go to such organizations and you would realize you know that this is how they are they project themselves as well. You know uh, 
uh, what are the verticals, what are the divisions and uh, which is the division within banking division, within insurance division and so on. So that, that actually explains it all and when you will look into the international sphere of these organizations, you would realize that there are international banking divisions and international branches also which are uh, you know associated with different divisions within that it becomes complex and complex basically because for every division you cannot open a branch so you open a branch and connect to every division that makes sense also so that is how you know it, it is implemented and you have to enhance the sales of all the products you are having at hand so structural integration integration among divisions within sbus but independence across sbus Strategic planning may be the most prominent function in headquarters for managing the strategic planning approval process of SBUs for the president. Each SBU may have its own budget for staff to foster integration. Corporate headquarters staff serve as consultants to SBUs and divisions rather than having direct input to product strategy as in the cooperative form. And here comes as far as unrelated diversification perspective. So, firms using unrelated diversification strategy want to create value through efficient internal capital allocations or restructuring buying and selling businesses. The competitive form is a structure characterized by complete independence amongst firms divisions. And here we have to mark this. Unlike the divisions included in the cooperative structure divisions that are part of competitive structure do not share common corporate strengths because strengths are not shared integrating devices are not developed for use by the divisions included in the competitive structure. In fact, they compete with each other. So, the efficient internal capital market that is foundation for using the unrelated diversification strategy requires organizational arrangements emphasizing divisional competition rather than cooperation. Three benefits are expected from the internal competition. First, internal competition creates flexibility and then you know resources can then be allocated to the division appearing to have the most potential to fuel the entire firm's success. Second, internal competition challenges the status quo and inertia and lastly, internal competition motivates effort in that the challenge of competing against internal peers can be as great as the challenge of competing against the external rivals and this is how the structure looks like. So, you see there is a strong relationship between as far as structures and strategy goes and then in, in this form the corporate headquarters has a small staff, finance and auditing are the most prominent functions largely, legal affairs function becomes important definitely you have to control the situation through legalities, through documentation, through, through rights and those kind of things. Divisions are independent and separate for financial evaluation purposes also. Evaluation and monitoring is very strong as far as the situation goes. Divisions retain strategic control but cash is managed by its corporate office. Divisions compete for corporate resources. Example Textron. And it is a good example. Textron incorporated owner of Bell Helicopters uses the competitive form of the multi-divisional structure to encourage the best performance from its four business units. Textron operates four independent businesses, Bell Helicopter 29 percent of revenue, Cessna aircraft 35 percent you would have heard of that, finance is 6 percent and industrial 30 percent. To emphasize competitiveness among divisions, the headquarters office maintains an arm's length relationship with them, intervening in divisional affairs only to audit operations, mark this audit operations and discipline managers whose divisions perform poorly. This is how strategy and structure are related to each other, especially with the perspective of implementation and we are talking about strategic implementation here. I would be coming back to you with an analysis or a perspective on evaluation and audit in terms of strategy, how we evaluate strategy implementation in my next session. Till then, goodbye.